Hi, amazing teachers. Welcome to this Canyons U Bite Size PD. This is Mindfulness in Times of Stress and Uncertainty. Uh, I'm Julie Stefan Lindsay. I'm a program evaluation specialist with instructional supports. Thanks for watching. So at the beginning of the PD, if we were all in a room together, I would ask you to kind of think about on an average day, I feel most calm when. So just take a moment to think about that or jot that down. And then we'll move into our session. Just a reminder of our PD norms. I know you're watching this on video, so this may not apply, but you may also want to just briefly read through as a reminder and think about your intention for this PD today. Thinking about our framework, uh, this PD addresses building positive school climate. Uh, this PD also relates to our PBIS system and our goal of self-monitoring and also to problem solve collaboratively. Our learning intention for today is that participants will engage in a guided mindfulness practice and explore ideas about mindfulness in order to decrease stress and increase self-efficacy. The success criteria, I will know I have met the learning intention when I know one routine I can use for mindfulness and I have two resources for mindfulness that I can explore further. I do want to acknowledge how much is going on for all of us personally and professionally and nationally and globally. Um, and I recognize that a half hour is not enough time to spend on our on our mental health and our well-being. Um, but my hope is that this PD models that we can take care of ourselves in small, very small chunks um, in very small periods of time and model the ways that we can also do this with our students. So we've gone through some of the norms and learning intentions. Uh, I'm gonna guide a mindfulness practice. Then we'll talk about some of the goals and characteristics of mindfulness, including stressors, fear and anxiety, um, how stress and mindfulness are connected, uh, perceived stress and the yerkes dodson law, how to move forward with courage. And I'm gonna share a lot of resources that you can um, explore and use after this session. All right, so let's start with a guided mindfulness practice. So I'm gonna ask you to find a comfortable position that can be seated, that can be laying down, could be standing. And you're gonna rest your hands gently. Um, if you are feeling like you want to receive um, in terms of ideas, energy, um, openness, you wanna have your palms facing up to the sky. If you want to feel more grounded, a little calmer, um, kind of more reflective, I guess, uh, then go ahead and have your palms facing the earth. And go ahead and close your eyes or find a soft gaze. And during this time, I am gonna guide you. Your only goal other than um, thinking about some of the things I guide you through are to just kind of notice and observe. And I'm gonna encourage you to practice non-judgment. So go ahead and close your eyes or find that soft gaze. Take a few breaths. And just notice what's happening.
Where is your breath feeling smooth? Where is your breath feeling paused? Is your breath shallow? Does it want to go certain places in your body? As you can, breathe just a little bit deeper. Maybe toward your sternum or lower into the rib cage. If you can, all the way to the belly. As you breathe, think about someone who has recently helped you. This might be someone you're close to, like someone in your family, a close friend, Just think about that person. With your next few breaths, Think about another person who has helped you. Did you receive help recently from a colleague or a neighbor? someone you haven't seen in a while. With your next few breaths, Think about someone a little farther outside your circle who has helped you recently. Maybe someone you had to talk to on the phone or someone working at a store or someone you don't know very well. With your next few breaths, 
I'd like you to think about who you can stand behind. Who can you help? Who else? your next few breaths, who else can you help? Who else can you stand behind? On your next inhale, take a calming breath in. And a calming breath out. Do that one more time, calming breath in. And a calming breath out. ready, go ahead and return to the room. Thank you for joining me in that practice. I would love for you to pause and think about anything that surprised you, anything that shifted when we moved from someone who had helped you to standing behind someone, what changed? And thanks again. So I wanted to talk a little bit in a mini discussion about stressors and fear and anxiety, which are quite heightened right now. So what I'd like for you to do is with each of these questions, pause for a few minutes and either think about your response or you can, you're welcome to, to jot them down. It can be a, a good practice to kind of record our thoughts. I like to record my thoughts in lists. That's just how my, how my brain likes to function. So some things I'd like for you to think about are what current stressors are you facing or are we facing together? Why do stressors create uncertainty? What do we feel in our bodies in times of stress and uncertainty? And what happens in our minds in times of stress and uncertainty? So feel free to pause the video and reflect on these questions and come back when you're ready. So I wanted to share a little bit about how stress and mindfulness are connected. And I do want to emphasize that meditation or mindfulness is not a silver bullet. Uh, we won't come out of it automatically feeling better. 
Um, it's really about a way to relax into uncertainty and to build those benefits over time. So one way to think about it is the idea of self-care versus self-soothing. So self-soothing are going to be the things we do sometimes when either we're feeling really great or not feeling very good. So things like having a cup of tea, taking a bath, taking a um, going in, getting a treat or um, celebrating, um, those kinds of things are going to be the, our self-soothers, kind of these uh, brief, mm, periodic um, rewards for ourselves or ways to comfort ourselves. Self-care are going to be the long-term things that we do on a very consistent basis. So self-care are the things like getting enough sleep, eating well, getting some movement or exercise, um, spending time with our loved ones. So mindfulness is a little bit of both, which is what I think makes it really effective and really neat. So it can be in that moment that's self-soothing. Um, so I need a few minutes to pause and breathe and kind of relax my nervous system. But over time, that mindfulness and meditation practice becomes self-care and it becomes a way to take care of our bodies and take care of our brains uh, in a very healthy way um, and in a very consistent way. So the whole goal is to kind of slow down, spend a few moments or more to get to know your brain. And in getting to know your brain, uh, you're not trying to control it. You're not trying to eliminate thoughts or change your thoughts, but you're just getting more familiar with the way your brain works. And in that breathing, you really are sending calm, calming signals to your nervous system. So when you practice this kind of intentional um, mindfulness, also, also called loving kindness, um, it does have physiological, psychological, and behavioral benefits, which is where that self-care comes in over time. And I think another thing that is really beneficial about mindfulness is that you can have a specific focus, like you want to build your resilience, you want to build compassion or self-compassion, um, you want to practice some interpersonal relationship skills, you can do that through your mindfulness practice, or you can just pause and just notice your breath. So lots of opportunities uh, to, to use mindfulness in the way that it works best for you. As you're engaging in mindfulness, you can just tell yourself you're just beginning again and again to notice those thoughts. What is my brain thinking? And then letting it, letting it just float in and out or come in and out like waves. And we don't have to change the waves. We don't have to um, calm the waves. Just the noticing will help do that for us. Um, there's a uh, mindfulness, um, he would, I would probably consider him an expert, Dan Harris. Um, he says that having this self-awareness, other otherwise known as mindfulness, which is what's developed through the process of seeing your distractions and then beginning again, gently, over and over and over again, that is a game-changing skill. So when we engage in mindfulness, we're dragging all of the nonsense <laughs> in our brains, what he says uh, he calls out of the shadows and into the light. So we are practicing that non-judgment toward ourselves and increasing our self-compassion. Uh, it also helps us when we tip into panic or anxiety, having that skill of slowing down can help us notice that it's happening and help us make a choice about how to respond. So it helps us uh, become slower to react um, and become more attuned to what we're feeling and what we might need. So I did want to talk a little bit about perceived stress and the Yerkes-Dodson law because we do have heightened stress right now for many different reasons. Um, and what this law states is that we want a certain amount of stress to drive us toward productivity, 
But once we tip over into such a state of stress, our productivity goes down. Okay, so this is kind of their, their model to show this theory. So what it says is that we want that certain amount of stimulation or stress, but just up to a point um, because our performance will decrease if we are, are falling too far into, into those high stress levels. Um, the curve of this model will definitely depend on the complexity of the task we're asked to do and our familiarity. So if we know something really well, that curve is going to look different than if we're tackling something new. Um, so I did want to put a link in there. There's a perceived stress scale, and that particular link has been modified to apply to work. So since we are in the classroom um, supporting a lot of students who are also under a lot of stress and have some heightened responses, um, that scale will kind of give you a sense of how stressed you are at work and where you are on that graph. So about a 13 on that scale score is considered optimal. Um, if you're scoring 20 or higher, um, then you may have dipped into stress levels that are no longer serving our performance. Okay, so something to check out if you're interested. Um, and I did want to um, talk about Susan David, who is a researcher on emotional agility, which is the, the practice and the skill of acknowledging our emotions, recognizing our emotions, um, but attaching less evaluation to them. So we're not judging our emotions as good or bad. We're just using them as data and as information. So she says, our emotions are data. Slow down and face into your difficult emotions with courage. What you find there will signpost to you how you can make better decisions and take values-based actions. So it can be very challenging to slow down and engage in mindfulness. Uh, we have environmental factors like time and busyness and people around us. Um, sometimes our emotions are very strong, especially in um, everything we're facing right now. Um, it can be overwhelming. So I want to acknowledge that there is courage in that stillness. It takes courage to be there. Um, and also that there's productivity in the stillness. Um, there's a lot to gain from pausing for a moment. In the next section, I wanted to share a lot of resources with you. Um, depending on your, your bandwidth, your time availability, and what interests you, um, I tried to put a, a good variety in here. So I wanted to share that you can have micro practices with mindfulness. Um, sometimes we think we have to find the time to sit down and meditate for 15 minutes. And for a lot of us, that's just is not a realistic option, at least not on a regular basis. So I wanted to bring up a couple micro practices, which are just these uh, brief moments to kind of notice our breath. So there's one that's a three breath practice. In that first breath, you're just kind of paying attention to what's going on. In the second breath, you are paying attention to what's happening in your body. And in that third breath, you can kind of choose what is the purpose or the need for this mindfulness practice right now? So if you're trying to build resilience, you might in that third breath ask what's most important now. If you are working on compassion, outward compassion, uh, that third breath, you could be focusing on what would be of service. And if you're practicing self-compassion, that third breath, uh, you might be asking yourself, what do I need? Um, so I, I did this practice uh, not last night, but the night before my daughter had had a huge meltdown and it lasted about an hour. And then we finally got her calm and to sleep. And I sat in a chair and just took those three breaths um, and it was helpful. And then, you know, what? I wanted to move on to my show and kind of zone out. But 
pausing for that micro practice um, did help me articulate the specific emotion I was feeling in response to my daughter's emotions. So that was really helpful. Um, another micro practice you can do is deepening the breath, which is where you just pause and breathe and you're just kind of noticing what your breath feels like. Is it shallow? Some of the questions I asked at the beginning of our guided practice, is it shallow? Are you noticing any hitching in your breath anywhere? Are you holding your breath anywhere? Um, and then as you just notice without judgment, you just practice breathing lower and lower into your body. So we did the sternum and then we did the rib cage and then into the belly. Um, so you're just trying to potentially lengthen and smooth and deepen the breath. So those are two that you can do anywhere um, and can just take a few minutes. So um, hopefully you, you enjoy some of those or get a chance to try those. Um, I did wanna share, there is a resource where they do live meditation on the hour, 24 hours a day. So that's Monday through Friday. It starts at 1 a.m. Eastern. So I believe it will start at 11 p.m. Sunday night and go till 10 p.m. on Friday night, um, if I've done my, my calculation correctly. So that link is something to check out and you it's on Zoom and they will guide you through a live meditation every hour. So if, if you get the opportunity, definitely check it out. Um, if you are interested in learning more about the connection between mindfulness and emotions and our responses, um, there are a couple free courses and webinars. So there's an online course um, about building resilience in stressful situations called Mental Health for All. Um, there's a webinar series from this same uh, doctor uh, specific to the pandemic. So regulating emotions and building resilience, that's a webinar series. Um, and then there's an awesome online course to increase happiness and decrease stress called the science of well-being. Um, that's through Yale and with Dr. Lori Santos. Um, and one of the things I love about the course is at the beginning, she talks about how she's not this bubbly super happy person all the time. And she actually developed this course to teach herself how to increase happiness. So I appreciated that uh, transparency. Um, I'm also including here a bunch of resources, um, experts and um, readings that you might wanna check out. Uh, and it depends on what interests you and what you feel would be most beneficial to you. So I mentioned Susan David with Emotional Agility. Uh, Kristen Neff is a researcher on self-compassion and the importance of self-compassion. Uh, Brené Brown focuses on vulnerability and self-belonging. Um, if you are interested in resources specific to people of color, there are a couple resources there. Um, Katara McCarty has um, a bunch of different um, webinars, I believe they're readings um, and just kind of general um, resources. The Detroit Public Schools Community District has a, a long list of um, readings, podcasts, a um, lot of articles. So definitely worth checking out. Um, I mentioned Dan Harris, he has a book, an app and a podcast. Uh, Sharon Salzberg is a meditation specialist, and Danny Penman and Mark Williams wrote uh, Mindfulness, an eight-week plan for finding peace in a frantic world, which definitely spoke to me. So I've read most of that, and it's very helpful. Uh, just to share some closing thoughts, uh, mindfulness is noticing the wildness of your brain and beginning again and again. So just a gentle reminder to be courageous and be compassionate, especially with yourself. Um, the world needs the best of who you are now. So finding finding time for yourself so that you, you can show the best of you because um, we need each other very much. Um, if I can be of any further help or you have any questions, please feel free to reach me at julie.stephanlindsay at canyonsdistrict.org. And a couple helpful links and reminders. 
But thank you for joining me and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Take care.